So in this video, I want to give you an overview of the Science Investigation Skills, which is Unit 3. It's examined using an external practical exam and a written paper, which is worth 33% of your BTEC, so a significant amount. Our results last year were absolutely fantastic. And so working through this and doing all the practical work and as many practical as possible, you will be really well prepared. But it's really important to have an overview of exactly what the topic is about. So the skills being tested are your ability to plan a scientific investigation, your ability to collect data accurately and processing and analysizing and interpreting the data, and your ability to draw conclusions and evaluate the data. So let's look at each of these in a bit more detail. So the first section is planning a scientific investigation. The first thing you need to be able to do is develop a hypothesis for an investigation. You should be able to formulate, that means to write a hypothesis or a null hypothesis based on relative scientific ideas. A null hypothesis means you don't expect any difference between two things, and we'll come on to that later. The section two is that you select appropriate equipment, techniques and standard procedures. If we've done all that before and we look at more techniques within the topics. Third part is knowing that you can write about health and safety with investigations and you'll be fine with that. The fourth point of planning is to be able to think about the variables of investigation and identify the independent, the dependent and the control variables and how you control them. So the final section in this is about the method for data collecting and analysis. So you should be able to produce a clear, logically ordered method to obtain results. And you should be able to select the relevant measurements and range of measurements to be recorded. So what are the values and how big the range of results are going to be. And you should understand the importance of obtaining accurate and reliable data um, and to an appropriate degree of precision. Finally, understanding how the variables can be controlled, measured or monitored. So that's part A for planning, and you're probably familiar with most of those already. The second part is data collection, processing and analysis or interpretation results. So the first thing I'll test you on is can you collect qualitative and quantitative data? So can you collect data accurately, reliably, using repeat results and to a good precision? Can you calculate in a clear logical format using correct headings and units to process that data? Can you identify anomalous results and take appropriate action by ignoring them and repeating them? Can you recognise when it's appropriate to take repeat results or not? So be able to make qualitative observations and draw inferences, which is a technical name for conclusions. So this could be um, how smoky a flame is when you're burning fuels, or what colour the flame is. Qualitative means it doesn't have numbers for it. The second bit is processing the data that you collect. So you should be able to carry out relevant calculations where appropriate, including the use and interpretation of error bars, which are also standard deviation bars, calculating the mean and standard deviation, and also using statistical tests, including the t-test and chi-squared test and correlation analysis. All of this part will be new to you. Use a formula, which will always be given you in the question to do calculations. And an ability to rearrange formula, to convert the units that you record under, to put them in standard form, and to calculate the percentage error of your measuring equipment to give an idea of how accurate your results are. And of course, be able to display your data on a format, including bar charts, um, graphs, and choosing which you would use and also plotting to the correct scale. All of these will go through in future lessons. And finally, the last bit is to draw conclusions and evaluation. So you need to be able to identify trends and patterns in the data. You need to be able to compare primary data and secondary data taken by somebody else to look at how reliable they are. You need to be able to use the data to draw conclusions that are valid and relevant to the purpose of the investigation. Part of interpreting data is to see whether the null hypothesis is accepted or rejected. So null hypothesis means I don't think there's any difference between two different sets of data. So you'll be looking at that. 
you'll be looking at range bars, which are also standard deviation bars, to tell if there's a real difference in results. And finally, evaluation. You'll be able to make recommendations for how to improve your investigation. You should be able to explain anonymous results. So it says you should be able to calculate quantitative source of error. That means percentage error of values that you obtain. And also discuss qualitative sources of error in terms of, well, I didn't use a parallax or I got parallax because I was measuring the measure of cylinder and I wasn't looking at either of those kind of things. You should be able to discuss evidence of the reliability of data collected during your investigation. So how do you know that your data is reliable? And also be able to give strengths and weaknesses to a given method, for instance, techniques, standard procedures, etc. And finally, be able to suggest improvements to an investigation. Now that seems a whole wealth of information and that is how they list it in the exam. And it's worth just going through that so you can see what they're going to test. We will, over the next term, look at all of these and do lots of practicals in order to really gain skills in these areas. So how are they going to actually examine you on this? Well, first of all, they're going to examine you on key practicals which are set out in different topics. So you look at enzymes in action, which is a biology topic, and looking at key practicals to do with enzymes. You look at diffusion of molecules, which is a chemistry topic, and do key practicals on diffusion. You look at plants and their environment, which is biology, and do practicals on photosynthesis um, and collection of data for growth of plants. You look at energy content in fuels, which is linked between physics and chemistry to see which fuel, which hydrocarbon, gives you the most energy, or burning foods, which food is going to give you the most energy. And you'll also look at electrical circuits to do with physics, and you'll do lots of different electrical practicals. All of those practicals are designed to make sure that they build up your skills, and we will do all the practicals they could possibly ask you about, so you are really prepared for your exam. So next thing is, before we go on and look at anything else, it's really important to understand what the exam will actually look like, because that gives you a good idea about why we're using all these things. The first thing is you'll carry out a part A, which is a practical exam set by the exam board on one of those topics there. You're given a very clear method to follow, so there's no planning needed. You're given three hours in lab time maximum in one go, but actually you won't need three hours. You'll have to follow the method really carefully, but it is in great detail to make sure that everything is included. You'll have to design your own table of results with three repeat reading. You'll have to carry out the practical safely and skillfully using techniques learned to obtain accurate results. And finally, you need to record other visual observations, e.g. as we've talked about before, colour of flame, smokiness of flame, or maybe the brightness of the bulb. In the exam, you are only marked for the table of results in terms of your repeat readings and your significant figures. If your data goes wrong, you will not leave marks on that as long as you are recording it correctly. So just to give you an example, this is one of the uh, practicals that was set. It says, please read the following brief carefully before completing the practical investigation. You must observe safe practice when carrying out the practical investigation. You are an assistant research scientist who works for an apple juice company. You have been asked to find the optimum concentration of the enzyme pectinase to extract the maximum mass of juice from apples. The pectinase enzyme breaks down the apple cell walls to release the juice. So they've given you the science behind it, they've explained everything to you. Safety information, do not consume the apple juice extract. Avoid direct skin and eye contact and wear eye protection. Wipe all spillages immediately and rinse the cloth thoroughly with water. So here is the method. Pause the video and read it through. And you can see how detailed it is. And if you follow this, you can't go wrong. So that's part A. And you would have to design your own table of results. This is the table of results that a student designed for it. You can see you've got concentration of pectinase with um, the unit there going down. This should be 1.00. 
and 2.00, and that should be 0 0.50. You can see they've got the mass of the juice in grams extracted, and they've done repeat results, and they've run those two because they, quote, they decided that those were anonymous results. They should have actually retested them. But the student who did this got four marks for that section because you only have to show that they're recording the results accurately. So what happens with a written class for exam? Well, that's one and a half hours long. So section A is worth 30 marks. And the first thing you do is you get the results taken given back to you from that practical exam. And the first thing you do is you redraw that results table neatly. You then have to plot a graph of those results, and the scale has got to be done so that the data occupies more than half the graph paper, and you have to decide whether you do a bar chart or a line graph. You need to be able to identify the variables, which was independent, which were dependent, and which are the control variables. You need to then do some statistical analysis on the results, and you will be told in the questions which, was, which statistical analysis to do. Is it going to be standard deviation? a t-test, a chi-squared test. All the equations are given to you, you just have, you have to recognise them and know how to use them. Then they might ask you to make a conclusion about the relationship between the data collected. And maybe calculate percentage errors in some of the values, so you can say if the data is accurate or not. And we'll look at all of that at a later stage. And of course, they might ask you about the techniques you use to obtain accurate results, like stirring the water if you're heating it so that it evens up and keeping the thermometer away from the edges. Or if you're doing a titration practical or measuring a liquid in a measuring cylinder to make sure you're looking at eye level with the meniscus so you reduce parallax error. And the other thing they might ask you is how you could extend the investigation to investigate something else or to improve the accuracy of your results. So the next section, section two, consists of two questions, and they're testing really the planning side and the valuation side. And so what they'll ask you to do is to plan an investigation. The investigation they ask you to plan should be very familiar because it should be one of the practicals that we have done with you. And so they will give you the scenario to plan, and they'll remind you of all the things you have to include. Just pause the video and have a quick read about this one. So that one's worth 12 marks. The next one, question five, is worth only eight marks, but it's a practical evaluation of the method and results. And what they do is they invent a practical, which you should also be familiar with, but they put a very short method and the data is not very reliable and there are errors in it. And what they're asking you to do is to comment on the method, how you'd improve the method, what's wrong with the analysis maybe, um, and the conclusion, and how you'd improve that. So it's really testing your skills. It's really like spot the difference or spot the mistakes. But you'll do loads of these as we go through the next term to term and a half. So you'd be really secure on how to answer these questions. But that is what the exam paper looks like. So you've got an understanding of why you're doing all these things. So what's our strategy? in order to prepare you fully for the Unit 3 Scientific Investigation Skills. The first one is, is to learn and remind you of the skills that you need in the following areas. So that's the planning of scientific investigations, data collection, process analysis and interpretation, and drawing conclusions and evaluation. And we'll do that while you're still out of school. When you come back into school, we're going to study each of the subject topics one at a time carry out all the practicals that they could possibly examine you on and use each practical to focus on the skills that you have done in part A, B and C. Finally, we'll get you to carry out lots of past paper exam practicals to complete section one using the practical and then going through the exam to um, answer it. And then also completing lots of the planning questions on question four and lots of the evaluation questions from past papers on question five. So you really have confidence and the skills to tackle those.